Dunkirk is directed by Christopher Nolan and stars Fionn Whitehead, Harry Styles, James D.R.C., Kenneth Branagh, Tom Hardy, Gillian Murphy, and Mark Rylance. This is the story of the Allied forces in World War II who retreated to the Dunkirk Harbor in order to retreat from German forces that invaded in the that invaded France. And along the way, the the, the film covers three different three different acts of three different narratives, including the land, the sea, and the air, with with multiple characters having to intertwine throughout the film in order to basically evacuate and try to get off and trying to evacuate the premises of Germ of France in order to get away from the Germans. Now a little backstory. As a lot of you or if some of you have been following some of my reviews that I've done on my website at filmfreaks.com I have been doing written reviews of Christopher Nolan's movies uh, since his original film following from 1999 all the way up into Interstellar and I've reviewed all of his films with the exception of his three Batman films. And the reason why I haven't reviewed those films is because I was holding off on them for a special retrospective on the Batman films, including the other ones from the original movies until now. So those would pro sometime down the line I'll have a different re uh, video or a different... Uh, I'll have a different audio retrospective or something in that regard for the other Batman films that he's done of the three Batman films that Christopher Nolan has directed on a separate occasion. But for now I'm just specifically talking about I was but for now I just reviewed his non uh, Batman films that were on my website on written reviews. So with this movie, I was actually really looking forward to it because I'm quite a big fan of war films uh, and I the the whole story involving Dunkirk, the Dunkirk evacuation kind of got me curious because based on what we see on the trailers, this doesn't look like a typical war film. Now, in the past, we've had a lot of movies such as Saving Private Ryan, you know, Schindler's List, and <clears throat> Hacksaw Ridge, and things like that, that show a lot of the, the very brutality of war, as it spe so to speak. With this film, it seemed like Christopher Nolan was taking a different type of approach by building more of a psychological approach to the way that the war is handled. And in this regard, we're seeing basically the opposite of war, where you're having to where instead of them trying to fight, they're actually trying to escape and trying to get out of the location. Which I actually, from based on the previous alone, that actually seems like a really great direction because that's something I don't really see too often with. And so, with this one coming out, since I'm a big Christopher Nolan fan, I've really wanted to check out the film, uh, you know, based on what he's all, all the films that he's directed alone. And unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to watch this movie in IMAX because some personal things came up, so I had to watch it in a regular theater. But I gotta tell you right now that I really did enjoy this film a lot. Now, do this film does have its flaws to it, but I will say that I was very impressed with it, and I can honestly say that Christopher Nolan is one of those few directors working today that really knows how to craft his style of filmmaking, and he really knows how to make a lot of authentically made productions with his movies. And with this film, here are my I'll go ahead and start with my pros. I really enjoyed the way the direction was with this, especially how on the overall story arc we get the three-act structure which involves the, the the soldiers on the land, the sea, and the in the air. And you actually get to, from similar to how it did with Memento, you actually kind of see the way that the, the soldiers are pretty much intertwined as the story goes along. Because you see the different sides ever cut out where in the land, it takes place during a majority of a week, and then in the sea, it takes place in one day, and then the air take while well, in the air, the planes battles are taking place in one hour. So I really enjoyed the way that direction went with how you're seeing the battles inter interspliced of each other in the way that it's edited to where it keeps it very consistent, and it, and it's you know it might seem like it's all over the place in some and for some people, but I, I feel like the way it's all plotted around. It does gave me flashbacks to Memento in a very positive way. And with this one as well, I also really enjoyed the performances, especially from Tom Hardy again. Like, I'm always going to be a Tom Hardy. I've always been a Tom Hardy fan, and it's funny that in this one, he spends a majority of the time in the air with this mask on when he's talking. And it, it seems like that's basically, that's, that's like the third time I've seen him do that since The Dark Knight Rises where he played Bane 
and then in Mad Max Fury Road where he kind of had a mask on for about 25% mm, of the movie or maybe maybe a little longer but yeah it's really great you know seeing him in this uh, work with Christopher Nolan again especially coming off of Inception and The Dark Knight Rises as well so I enjoyed his presence when he was on screen and I also really enjoyed the other performances including Mark Rylance and Kenneth Branagh and and the other guy too uh Fionn Whitehead I believe that's how you pronounce his name some of the newer some of the younger actors we younger uh soldiers we see in the film they they do really have a lot of great uh, courage and intensity to their roles and another big praise I really enjoy this film most is that it gets really intense as hell like you see a lot of the damage that takes place with these battleships that they're on or I'm, I'm sorry on these ships that they're on excuse me and I really enjoy the, the way that Nolan was able to craft a lot of practical effects because when you see the ships and also the planes all of it really looks real especially when you see the damage taking place and then when you see everything sh like sinking down or when you see like the airplanes flying and, sh and being shot, it really looks great, especially if you're watching it on an IMAX screen. And another praise I give to the most is once again, Hans Zimmer really shines with his score again. This, the score that he uses in this one does sound, did give me flashbacks to hearing Interstellar because it sounds like throughout the entire film that you hear like a ticking time bomb going off. And you can really feel the intensity every time that his music pops in. In fact, it almost seems like the music itself becomes a character because it's like when you're about to hear the Germans come in or when things are happening unexpectedly, you can all you can hear it based on the score alone. So I really did enjoy hearing Hans Zimmer's score really getting you in that intent, getting you really into that very scary as shit like moments that it happens. Those very scary as shit moments that happen throughout. So I do. Once again, he shines in this movie. And the sound editing, man, I tell you, that, like when I'm hearing the gunshots go, well, when I'm hearing the, especially when you're hearing the spitfires going off in the air and you're, and you're hearing it go, coming down, it really, you really hear it, like, it like booms the theater around and, and you can hear all the gunshot, you can hear all the, the shots going off like so loud and, and it's very intense. And I also really enjoy the, the way that the, the, the cinematography looks as well, especially how it's very like bleak and murky looking and you get very beautiful shots of the water as well in the ocean. And, and, and the way that it's paced too is very handled, for, it's handled very well because it, it seems like this is probably much the shortest film that Christopher Nolan has directed since following because all of his other films have been a little over two hours long or maybe longer. And this film, I can see why they wanted to pace it the way it is and make the running time shorter because it's only about an hour and 45 minutes. And it actually goes by pretty fast. And if you look at it, this is basically uh, the equivalent of watching all the battle scenes in like Save and Pride Ryan, but they were they were all happening in just one day, and that's what it really feels like. There are some nighttime scenes that happen here and there, but if you look at it, like the overall pacing feels like it, it takes place all in one day. So I really enjoy the, the way the film is, you know, keeping on that level, and you can really get into the way the battles take place and, and the way that the soldiers are having to evacuate. And... I mean, there's more I want to go into, but that's really the gist of the film to me, because... I really don't really have much else to really go by because the movie does have a very straightforward narrative. I mean, yeah, there are things that are happening here, like all around with the way that, you know, there's the three the three different narratives, but the way that it unfolds, it is still keeping it consistent with having to, having all the soldiers evacuate from Dunkirk. Now, I will say that there were a few flaws, there were a couple of flaws that I will say did kind of throw me off. For one, I did feel like there wasn't really much of a main character in this film. I mean, I get this. This this is supposed to be an ensemble piece, so I, I enjoy that Christopher Nolan is able to have ensemble piece films. But I did feel like the film could have maybe had more backstory to some of these characters, and maybe had a little bit more depth because it didn't seem like you know when some things were happening where you're supposed to feel kind of emotional for some of the characters. I didn't really feel like it. If I, I didn't really feel like I got attached to him as much as I should because, you know, I didn't hardly, I mean, you hardly really, you don't really know anything about him, so it really kind of threw me off in, in that regard. Now, there are points throughout the film where I am feeling the intensity of the situation overall. It's just that when the film is trying to cut to individual characters, 
I really don't really get much like of a feel out of it because I didn't really know who they were. And another thing too, I will say was that um, I did think that they kind of with the 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 land storyline where the character where the characters are having to last for a week. I felt like that one did kind of go by a little fast because it seemed like it, it was only like a couple days and then it went to a week. So I, I did feel like the battle probably could have took place longer. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I, I think that the Dunkirk situation, like the overall battle, think, I think took place in one week, but I can't be sure. Um, so if I get facts wrong, I do apologize for that uh, if, I, if I'm not aware of that. But I, I feel... I feel like on a story point perspective, it did seem like it was kind of going too fast and because we didn't really seem like, you know, a whole week on the sh on the land section. So maybe that's just a minor nitpick because on a movie structure, but I feel like it probably could have done a lot more with that. So those were just my only two really minor, my only two cons I had because overall I still really love the movie. Now, is it say, now say if it's, probably one of my least liked uh no one films possibly i mean i i still hold this as one of his best as as a great film like in in one of his best movies now I, i'll say that it is better than following and it's something that i can you know i would own and i would definitely check it out on blu-ray and everything so i i would say it's probably my second least favorite but i still really enjoyed it and so with that regard with the with the little minor with, and with that regard i'm going to give Dunkirk a 9 out of 10. For those of you who have also seen Dunkirk, what did you think of it? Comment below and if you like what you see here, you can also like and subscribe to my channel and I'll be seeing you in my next review. I'll catch you later.